and I lost myself within the fire breaking <sighs> so I just had a major meltdown I am so tired <laughs> I'm getting some coffee. Let's see how this goes. This is for me. Where's my tea, my dear? Aw, it's a wee baby. Keep the change, sweetheart. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, please, if you have one. Yes. You're so spoiled, dog. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Give me just a second. Let me get on the road, sister. Let me get on the road.
What a day, what a morning. So I stopped at Scooter's Coffee. I hadn't been there before. Um, I like Starbucks, but they're always so darn busy and I don't feel like sitting and waiting. I'm not in one of those moods to wait today. I just had a major stressful meltdown with my husband. So we had stopped at a local convenience store this morning. He wanted to come with hot coffee. And he likes the convenience store hot coffee. And I went in and got a nice tea, set it up on the counter, and got me a couple of sticks of jerky. These are great guys. If you uh, haven't tried them, do. They're a dollar. They're Jack Lake's Classics. I don't know what the macros are on them. I looked it up. So, but it's, I mean, it's a good meat snack. Not super greasy. Some of them, you know, you get any more really super greasy. Anyway, set my iced tea on the counter and proceeded to spill it. There was a towel there, so I grabbed the towel and I start mopping up. And the cashier was just rude. Just rude. She didn't say anything rude, but she just like glared at me like I intentionally meant to do it. And I'm like, I am so sorry. I do apologize. You know? And then she's like, she's like, well, are you going to refill it? And I go, no, I'll pay for what I spill. No, I'm not going to refill it and have you glare at me even more. Please. I've had a headache for a two or three days now. Sorry guys, I know there's a lot, a lot of road noise. The wind's whipping pretty good here, so. I had a headache. I can't figure out what's going on. And then I just have, you know, normal life stresses that we all have, and today it just all boiled over. So after dropping my husband off, after getting bills paid, I think that's probably part of it. I hate paying bills. You know, I guess if I had money in the bank all the time, bills wouldn't bother me. But when you live paycheck to paycheck like I do, paying bills is a very stressful thing, you know. And it won't be once I get, you know, I just, from promoting my own business, I have, you know, extra bills that I'm trying to get paid off, you know, loans that I still owe from that, things like that. So I pay off those. So I don't have a lot of extra money. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of extra time to go and get a second job. I work um, 10 hour shifts, four hours a day. And then um, I go down and I help my parents two out of the three other days off I have. And then the third day off is you know, what I have to do, I have, you know, I still have to do my laundry and clean my house and cook food and go grocery shopping and all that stuff. And so I really run on empty. I don't know how you guys do it. They have kids. Lord have mercy. God bless parents. God bless you parents out there. I don't know how you do it. I can't do it. And that's just me and my husband and a dog. Get stressed out. If I'd have had kids, I probably would have. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have been a good situation. Which is one of the reasons why I knew I didn't want to have kids. So, oh fuck. Excuse my language, but that's just kind of the day I've had. Is an effing day, and it's 9:30. So, you know, it's got to get better from this point on, right? <laughs> Let's hope so anyway. His homecoming tonight for the football game. So after I work at my parents, I'm just going to stay down there. I brought a change of clothes um, to shower and go to the football game. Then go home and sleep and get up and do it all over again. So one of the reasons 
that I got on here is because I have been having such a crappy cola of a day that I really, really am at the point where I'm, I want to eat. I want something sweet and salty and I want all the crap foods. And I didn't do it. I went and I got me my iced coffee here with two pumps of sugar-free caramel, one pump sugar-free vanilla, and um, some half and half in it. I would have liked it a little bit sweeter, but that's just me. I like my, I like more sweetener less coffee. But it's really not bad. It's actually kind of hits the spot. I kind of like that coffee flavor, even though I don't really like the coffee flavor. I'm learning to like it. Everybody always used such a dark roast, and I'm more of a lighter roast person, so I think maybe I need to do like this much coffee. Could you add a little water to it? I don't know. But it's not bad. I had never tried theirs. Um, we have a Dunkin' Donut. I haven't gone through them yet and to see what they have for sugar-free stuff. I always feel kind of weird ordering it because I don't really know what I'm doing. I just kind of try to act like I do. You know, fake it till you make it. <laughs> Isn't that what they always say? <sighs> I'm glad it's Friday. Not that it really means a whole lot, but I'm glad it's Friday. Saturdays have been pretty slow at work, which is kind of nice. So it's kind of a chill out day. I'm just on the phone customer service all the time. I don't have any forms to fill out. I don't have, you know, I have training about every two weeks or so and then I'm going to be start training in October for a different position which I never asked if it came with a pay raise which either way it's going to benefit me in, in the future so if it doesn't give me a pay raise now eventually it will but I'm pretty sure it probably will come with a pay raise but I don't really know that Never did ask. Maybe I should. Finally, at the point um, where I don't feel like I'm fighting a losing battle in some of the battles that I'm fighting. You know, when you are trying to figure out how to deal with the situation, whatever your situation may be, whether it's weight loss or whether it's paying bills or whether it's, you know, what you're going to cook for supper or, or learning to cook, you know, we all have our struggles to get through and we have to realize that I get so aggravated with people anymore and I used to not be that person and I'm trying not to be that person and I don't get aggravated to their face necessarily well yeah sometimes I do not at work because at work I get paid to be nice but after work sometimes you know I try to remember that everybody else has stuff going on in their life too. You know, everybody makes mistakes, everybody does stupid stuff, and then they're like, why did I do that? You know, and I try to remember. I do all of that too. You know, there's times when you're just, you can't help it. You're looking at them and you're like, you're an idiot. That was the stupidest thing anybody should have done, you know, whatever the situation. I had an instance this morning. I have these two ladies. I'm turning a corner a block away. They're walking. They stop. And then when I'm halfway through the block, they decide to go to, through the intersection. Where if they'd have just went through, walked on through, as I was turning the corner, 
they would have been across the way before I even got there. But then they waited, and then all of a sudden they decided to go, and I'm right there on them, and I just slam on my brakes, and they're looking at me like, I mean, I didn't, it's not like I was going 90 miles an hour, but it's like, and then they just kind of look at me and then they smile and wave like, oh, sorry. And I was like, that's a good way to get killed, you idiots. <laughs> Does anybody else ever feel like that? And I know sometimes I'm the idiot that everybody's cussing out. I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Lord knows I'm not. <laughs> Lord knows I'm not perfect. But here in the last couple of weeks, I've noticed I have a very short fuse for stupidity. Whether it's my own stupidity or somebody else's stupidity, I have a very short fuse for stupidity. Boom, boom, 
the room with phone calls. I mean, you're no more than disconnected from one and you've got another one coming. The girl that sits next to me, we usually have a little bit of time throughout the day to chit chat. And I bet you out of our 10 hour shift, she gets there about a half hour before I do and leaves a half hour early. So out of our nine and a half hour shift that we're together, we maybe spoke to each other for 10 minutes all day long. And that was like a minute here and there throughout the whole day. It was just crazy. And the people that I would have to transfer my customers to and stuff on situations that I couldn't assist with, um, that took forever too. So my customers are hanging on the phone, you know, and I'm touching back with them and letting them know, you know, hey, I'm just waiting for this department to pick up so that we can assist you and we're doing the, you know, and my customers are like, it's really taking that long and they're getting alley and, well, how's Kim? You can't help me. And I'm like, because I don't, for security purposes, I don't have access to your credit card information or, you know, I don't have, I'm not a product specialist in that. And if I tell you wrong and you order it and it's the wrong thing, then you're going to be mad at me. And I don't, you know, I don't want you to get the wrong item and have to send it back. And then we send you the correct one. I'd rather it was the right from the first, you know. I, I'm sorry, I can't help that they're busy. You know, and then the couple that I did talk to and ask him for some assistance on some stuff, they were just really kind of snappy too so it must just kind of be in the air I don't know what's going on everybody just needs to, <laughs> to take a deep breath and just let it out just let it all go I know I do and that's what talking to you right now has been about is just letting it all go and I hope my rant and raving hasn't irritated you but knowing that there's somebody out there listening to my rants and raves, to my whining and crying, I guess, it's, it's kind of nice. It's calmed me down. It's like talking to my best friend, even though I never get to talk to my best friend because we're always running in opposite directions and we're hardly ever around each other. Heck, I hardly only see her, but maybe once every six months anymore. Kind of sad. But, you know, that's what happens when you get married. Family life kicks in. And it sucks. You know, and you're around the same people all the time, all the time, all the time. And when those people start to irritate you, which is what happened this morning, my husband, actually, it wasn't even his fault. He's the one that just got the brunt of it. Honey, I'm sorry I love you. <laughs> but things that he's done in the past little while that have irritated me all came up this morning. And he got the end of the stick. And he should know, and I, and I need to call and apologize to him. So, and I will do that. I had to calm myself down before I did that. So, that's what you guys helped me do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'm out here at my mom and dad's. Gonna get ready to work on some more shit. <laughs> So I told you that we're working on a building. I'll take a picture of the building that we're working on. So when I say that we're working on organizing a building, you can understand. This is like a warehouse sized building, guys. This isn't just a little garden shed that I'm trying to get organized. And it's got 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years of stuff in it. Stuff that has been moved out of other buildings. 
stuff that's new, stuff that's old, stuff that's my grandparents, stuff that's, you know, it's just a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of stuff. I'm glad I live in a small house and I don't have all this stuff. <sighs> Mercy. All right, so I'm going to get out and get on with my day. Thanks for joining me. Love you. Bye.